What is up YouTube? James back here and welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Backtrack Bass. Today we are still using this Empoleon team of Empoleon, Charizard, Sylveon, Landers, Farian, Zapdos, and Tapabula. Let us get straight into it. But today, if you don't know, is actually Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving at least here in America. I know Canada has a different Thanksgiving. But yeah, I have a lot of things I'm grateful for. It's been a pretty, well, 2017, kind of 28, well, yeah, 2017, 2016, ever since last year, basically for the past year, there have been some struggles, but yeah, it's been amazing, like the support you people have been showing me, and yeah, it's been a tough time, but yeah, it feels, it feels great knowing that I can just do what I do here on YouTube. I can just you know, play Pokemon, uh, do what I normally do, just play Battle Spot with teams that I'm testing out for like regionals and stuff, trying out some cool ideas and yeah, uh, you people appreciate it. So yeah, thank you so much. But anyway, let us play some games. Hopefully we can find some games. We're 1658, which I think is still currently top 10 on Battle Spot. I think like the cutoff well, when I'm recording this, this is what it's, it's like 16:30, so I definitely made the cutoff at least today. But who knows for the future? And of course, I could drop while I'm recording these, so who knows about that? But yeah, let's hopefully we can find a battle. But in the comments down below, let me know what you're thankful for if you do celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, so it's also I guess kind of a sad time. Like as much as happy, it's happy. Like you have to be thankful for each other. Nice meals, uh, Super Bowl, I guess. But I'm not a football fan. But yeah, uh, there's just a lot of people that I know. Just you know, they lost their families early. I try to at least you know give them a Skype call or something because I have a lot of friends who just have been through way worse than me. Like. My life is pretty fortunate compared to theirs, and they are pretty amazing people, so. Yeah, so if you know anyone who's kind of lonely on this Thanksgiving or Christmas, I this is kind of more of a Christmas thing, but you should still be uh, thankful. Like, people should be thankful for their lives. Like, it's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be enjoyed. I do know, like, okay, I'm not going to go too deep. I don't want this to be a too deep episode. Come on. That's just not me. I don't like to go down in deep topics. I barely talk about my personal life for, like, reasons. Yeah, I'm just here to play Pokemon. And that's what you people come and watch me for. Just cool teams, cool strategies, and some really great games. So let's see if we can find someone. It might be hard because... Since I'm currently like in the top 10 of VGC right now, it's like hard to find games when you're like high high on the ladder. But we find someone, 15-15 rating, uh, Naganado, Tapufini, Whimsicott, Arcanine, Salamence, and Persian. So this is an interesting team. Z Nature's Power is definitely coming to my mind right now. Mega Salamence. Uh, it's interesting. But you know what looks really good? Empoleon. Why does Empoleon look so good right now? Please tell me, people, why does Empoleon actually look amazing in this game? Like, there's nothing that my opponent can really do against it, unless that Arcanine maybe carries close combat or the Wild Charge, if it's Life or Bandit. So knowing that, I want to lead my Empoleon here, because Empoleon can do a lot of work. Sylveon actually does look like it can do a lot of work in this game as well. Zapdos also looks... Oh, my Pokemon look amazing here. So the ones I want to rule out, I don't like Charizard. Charizard actually really doesn't do too well in this matchup. Tapu Bula, I think I do want to bring. I know Sylveon looks really tempting. Sylveon does look really tempting. Uh, I think I want to go Landorus. Jeez, Zapdos looks so tempting. Yet yeah, I think I want to try Tapu Bulu. Oh, no, I know. Bring Double Fairy against a Naganada isn't exactly the... Best strategy. I think I should go Zapdos here. Unfortunately, Sylveon doesn't really get brought much. Like the main, the kind, the when I was building this team, the slot was kind of empty. The main reason I want to bring or have Sylveon is because I was like, okay, I kind of lack like an offensive special sweeper on this team. 
Uh, there's not much I can do damage on my team, so I thought a, a special sweeper would be nice. And I thought, why not try out Sylveon? Because Sylveon kind of caught my eye, and I thought maybe it could work on this team. So, uh, it hasn't really been brought, but, you know, has potential. So, we see the Whimscott here combined with the Naginado. This is going to be interesting of the first few turns. Because I don't know. It could be Fake Tears Whimscott. Could be just Tailwind. Could be... I don't know, could Encore see Nature's Power once again, but luckily there's no Coco I have to really worry about. Icy Wind is a very safe play here, and I think I'll just scout for the HP Ice, to be honest. Like, even, I'm probably, like, my play here, I think, is just to protect Landers first turn, then switch out to Zapdos in the following turn, because I really just don't know what my opponent's going to do. It's not going to switch out, which is okay here, as Top of Phoenix is going to come out. That means I can bring out my Top of Bulu in the future, which I do not mind. Why is it that one's got Dust Carry Z Nature's Power? I guess that could be a bit troublesome. And I'm pretty sure one's got going to at least set up Tailwind here. Oh, it's going to go straight for Z Nature's Power, and I think that's going to target on my Landis, so I do not mind that. So I get rid of the Z Nature's Power, which is huge, because... Uh, if I switch in hard into Zapdos there, which is why I didn't want to really go hard Zapdos, is because of the potential Z Nature's Power. I didn't think my opponent would go for a turn one and onto my Lander slot, if anything, though. So... This is still going to do a good amount. Should do about 20% to protect. And every chip damage onto Landers is pretty crucial. As it gets a crit to protect. I still think that's dumb. Like how Z-Moves can crit to protect there. But I do get an Icy Wind off into my opponent. So that type of Fiend is going to be slowed down. As well as the Whimscott. And should be in Flash Cannon range. So I should be able to knock out Whimscott here. And get a Flash Cannon off. The only problem is Whimscott's probably going to set up a Tailwind. And then Top of Fiend is going to have a Muddy Water. So I'm going to Flash Cannon Whimsicott. I really want to go into Tapu Bulu. The reason I want to go into Tapu Bulu, I don't really need Zapdos that much in this game. If I have, if I keep Tapu Bulu alive and knock out Naginata in the future. So I'm going to go into Tapu Bulu here. One, it gets rid of Misty Terrain, which allows me to Toxic something with Zapdos in the future. Two, I want Empoleon healthy because Empoleon can easily win this game. So... We'll see what my opponent decides to do here. It's going to be the Encore into the Landers. And I am going to get a Flash Cannon off into the Whimsicott. So no Tailwind up in this game. And I knock out the Whimsicott, which is a crucial member. So Whimsicott going down there. Sweet. As Calm Mind going to be set up. Ooh. I mean, I was kind of anticipating it to be potentially Specs there. So I don't mind the Calm Mind. So basically the same thing. But that makes my Zapdos a lot less useful in this game. That definitely makes my Zapdos a lot less useful in this game as Naginata is going to come out. Now, I actually don't know the Calc of Ice Beam onto my onto Naginata here. And Naginata is what speed stat? Like, I'm trying to think of my Zapdos out speed to 123. Naginata's, no, Naginata's like 190, I think. So even if I Icy Wind here, it really doesn't get anything. Unless the Naginato goes for like something such as a Tailwind here. But that doesn't really change much for me. I think I'm going to go hard Zapdos though. Because I don't want to take a Sludge Bomb. Landris still has his uses. Like Zapdos was really here just to hit Tapu Fini just in case. And sponge up hits. And that's what it can do right now. So Zapdos is going to come out here. As the pressure is on against my opponent. And the Sludge Bomb is just going to fire off into Zapdos. I should take that relatively well. Yeah. Like Zapdos actually took that like a champion. As Ice Beam is going to come out into the Naginata. And nice damage overall. Muddy Water is going to come out. And this is going to hurt if it gets an accuracy drop on my Empoleon. Not really so much my Zapdos. I had to speak it to life. Okay. That's still not too bad. Uh, I guess now is what do I value? Do I value Tailwind more? Do I value my Zapdos as HP? Or do I value more of getting a Toxic off on Nafini potentially? Might be Mega Salamence in the back. I think I'm just going to Ice Beam Naginato. And I think I'm going to... I really want a Toxic here. Because it allows my Empoleon to 1v1 it. Yeah, Tailwind doesn't even allow me to outspeed Salamence anyway, so I feel like Toxic is a fine play here. The only problem is that I can miss, so in retrospect, Tailwind can, you know, get the speed control. It never fails because of an act. Oh, wait, no, Empoleon got the accuracy drop, not these Aptos. So I can hit Toxic just fine, but I would really love to hit a Ice Beam and Naginato. 
which is more crucial in my opinion right now. So Sludge Bomb, once again, Toxic is going to come out. It does connect on to that type of Fini, which is nice because getting that chip damage is always really nice. Really need that Ice Beam to hit though. Nice. And now I... Now, Empoleon could potentially 1v1 the top of Fini with the grassy terrain up, so that's great. Muddy Water is probably going to be coming out once again. Yep. That does actually voids, which didn't really matter to me. I would have preferred actually probably just getting knocked out there for the free switch in the Landris on the Intim for the Intimidate. But I guess that's okay here. Like, Landris' job isn't really that great here anyway, so I don't really need Landris. Empoleon is definitely valuable, though. Like, oh, Arcanine's going to come in. Okay. So I guess Landis maybe does have some rolls. And at this rate, I could probably just set up a Tailwind here and Scald the Arcanine. Yeah, I could just Scald the Arcanine. Even if it's Banded, I don't really care. If it's Banded, we confirm it right now. And then I could go into Landis, go for Tectonic Rage, and then the win with my Tapu Bulu anyway. So no matter what, like, I'm in a fine position no matter what. Even if Zapdos goes down this turn, it doesn't really matter. I get a free switch into Landris. Like, no matter what, this game plan's pretty much set in my favor. Even if I miss Skull, it's not even that bad. So, the Flare Blitz is going to go into Zapdos. I don't remember what Arcanine really runs in this format. It might be Bandit. It might be Assault Vest. You keep hitting these attacks with Empoleon. So, Empoleon doing some work. Skull able to knock out the Arcanine. Is that a crit? That's a critical hit. Very unfortunate for my opponent because that pretty much seals up the game 100% there. Although, it was already looking bad for my opponent. That 100 seals up the game. Although, if it's a offensive Arcanine, it might not have mattered. Like, if it has no bulk, it might not have mattered, but if it does have bulk, then yeah, that 100% mattered. But, yeah, I don't really see how my opponent really handles the Empoleon, especially since I would have been able to switch in Landis there anyway. Tectonic Rage, uh, the Arcanine to protect. It might have actually been able to pick up the knockdown Arcanine by itself. The Tectonic Rage to protect from the Skull damage if I didn't proc a berry. So, either way, I think I still would have been able to win this game. But, yeah. Maybe it gave my opponent like this little sliver of chance of winning, but that avenue is gone. So I'll go for the wood hammer into Top of Fini and go for a Scald. As the match is going to be forfeit, so we do take another win and the first win for today's episode. So nice. The game plan wasn't really that complicated. I feel like I just tried to put myself in the best position possible. Was... The Ice Demon was pretty huge. Like, the Protect on Landers was just a safe scout for, like, HP Ice. Because if it wasn't HP Ice on the Naginado, that was good information. Because I could keep Landers in safely against the Naginado in the future. Because I don't think Draco Meteor, unless it's Life Orb boosted, will knock me out. And usually HP Ice variants don't run Life Orb, to be honest. So, because I think they run Z-Move. Oh, well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Well, then again, if it had Draco Meteor, I guess, but sometimes they have Tailwind. Sometimes they usually forego the Draco Meteor. But who knows? Uh, well, I want Gladion. We all know Gladion's in this game, so it's not a spoiler. I'm trying to avoid using the really cool music until uh, after a few more days when people have already played the game. I'll probably use it maybe in the next episode or the one after. However, let us see if we can take some more wins. 1669. Solid rating. I think the highest is 1680 currently. So we could, well, the time I'm currently playing. So potentially I could go to number one on the ladder today. <laughs> or I could drop back to like 1500s. All are possible. All are possible. All are possible today. So let us see who my next opponent is. Who my next opponent will be. But, yeah, it's probably going to take a while to find a game, so maybe cut it here, but I could talk about other stuff, although I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Oh, right, there should be either the new series, well, what, is Thursday? New series should start next week. I think beginning next week there'll be a new series. Side series should also resume sometime next week, so look forward to that because there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Also, let me know down in the comment section down below if you want me to do Doubles Battle Spot. Because I'm not sure about doing Doubles Battle Spot now. Since VGC 2018 is very, very similar to uh, Battle Spot. Well, I should say similar. Well, most of the rules are similar, obviously. Uh, it's just like Alola. Like all the Pokemon had to be caught slash bred in Alola. But basically, one thing that really stands out in VGC uh, 2018 and... 
Battle Spot doubles currently is the no power punch on Kang, Kangaskhan, which is a huge big deal because it really lessens the usage of Mega Kangaskhan. I feel like in VGC twenty eight in VGC twenty eighteen compared to Battle Spot doubles, where power punch at least gives it a lot more room to uh, do a lot of damage. So because low kick doesn't really do too much except on super effective hits and power punch, you know. The plus two return is still going to do a lot, even with the nerf on Mega Kangaskhan with Parental Bond being nerfed from 1.5 to 1.25. Uh, the first hit would still do a massive amount of damage no matter what, especially if you're using Double Edge. However, I think, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say. Let me know if you want to see uh, Double's Battle Spot, or should I just maybe do extra videos of uh, VGC 17 back to battles on uh, VGC 18 back to battles? Uh, let me know. Or maybe something else. But yeah, I think I'm just going to cut it here. So we'll be right back for another battle. Alright, we finally found someone. Someone from Japan. I've been here for 15 minutes waiting for a game, people. That's actually insane. What is this cool team? <laughs> Slow King Como. Oh no, is that team of Como? Guzzlord and Cineroar. Torterra and Sylvie? Not Sylvie. That's my side. Audino? What is that team? That looks cool. That looks cool as heck. Okay. Sylveon is the key in this game. Sylveon is 100% the key in this game. Uh, what else can I... I haven't seen a Guzzlord in forever in VGC. It's got great HP. Decent attacks. Pretty bad defenses. <laughs> it's got the highest... One of the highest HPs in the game. Let's see here. Sylveon 100%. I don't really need Tapu Bulu. Well, Tapu Bulu helps against the Slow King, but Zapdos can do well with Toxic here. Yep. Sylveon Zapdos, which is more solid, I feel like. Uh, I guess Charizard can do a lot of work. Landers too. I don't really like Empoleon on this matchup. It could do work, but I'm just not feeling it. I don't like Guzzlord can take hits. Uh, I'm going to be in a war against the Slow King, but if I get a Toxic off, I guess I do win it. Ice Beam could help against Arterra, but like, and it helps against Incineroar, but like Landers also helps against all those Pokemon plus Intimidate and U Turn support. I feel like it's better in that case. So, no one pulling on this time. We're going to go Sylveon though, and Sylveon has barely shown itself on the channel. So, hopefully, it can do some work because this looks like a game that Sylveon can put in a lot of work, and hopefully, I don't lose it. Turn one to like some kind of random Z move that crushes me, like uh, what corkscrew crash <laughs> from like Iron Tail or something. So, Como and Sonora is gonna lead here. That's fine. The pressure is on. Now I don't want to actually click Hyper Voice because Torterra is a Pokemon I can carry Wide Guard. Oh wait, I don't have Moonblast on this set. I thought I did. Oh well. So I'll go for Tailwind here and Hyper Voice. I'm pretty sure Incineroar is just going to fake out and we're going to see the Z-Move from Como. Does the Z-Move still work if it fails? I'm pretty sure it does because I'm pretty sure even if Z-Conversion fails, like, you still get the boost anyway. So Como gets this new Z-Move if you people don't know. Is this copyright? I actually don't know. If this is copyright, that's bad. I'm going to have to cut this out. Tailwind here. I'm faster than Como. That's actually really good information to know. Just Clang Scales, okay. So I don't have to worry about the Z-Move, it looks like. And that's not going to do too much to Zapdos. And doesn't affect Sylveon, obviously. And that lowers his defense. Which doesn't really affect this game, really. So I'm going to throw off just a Hyper Voice and Thunderbolt. I can definitely see Torterra coming in. If it has that wide guard. But I'm just going to Thunderbolt and Hyper Voice Incineroar. Actually, maybe the better play was just to go into Landers for Intimidate. Yeah, Landers was the better play. Because Flareblitz is going to hurt my Sylveon a lot. Although, I could potentially knock out the Incineroar if it doesn't carry much bulk. And there's no Protect coming from my opponent's side. So, Thunderbolt going to go into the Incineroar. Is that Assault Vest? That really didn't do anything. Oh, no! Soundproof? I'm getting destroyed right now. Citrus Berry is going to activate... I am getting destroyed right now. Jeez. Knock off. Oh, please me in the Sylveon. Oh, of course it's in the Zapdos. 
So, soundproof isn't very common on Cuomo. Uh, that is one of its abilities, though. I actually forgot it could get soundproof, but usually you see overcoat, which is an ability that prevents, like, weather, chip damage, or the uh, powder moves from affecting, because that's more common in VGC. So, soundproof instead. Wow. So, I'm going to have to switch out and probably use Hyper Beam on it if I have to do something about it. Uh, I'll roost up here with Zapdos and gain some recovery. And luckily, Incineroar is going to go down to Hyper Voice. And Incineroar gets knocked off too. That's really clean. So, Roost is going to come out from Zapdos. Yeah, if I want to knock out this combo, I'm going to have to switch out Sylveon. But I don't think anything on my team really appreciates the Clanging Scales. Since I didn't bring my <laughs> Empoleon. <laughs> oh, man. But Hyper Voice does knock out the Incineroar, so I at least got rid of one of my opponent's Pokemon, and my opponent really isn't hitting my Focus Blast this time. Okay, maybe expecting a Switch or expecting that Roost. Very nice play. Because I think it does more, and the fact that your defense is being lowered so much. I mean, yeah. So Aldino's going to come out. I definitely want to hit that thing up with a Toxic right here, and I just don't have a good Switch in. Although, I'll, I guess I'll risk Sylveon now, since if he's going to go for Focus Blast, I don't mind. And I definitely want a Toxic on Aldino. If it has Refresh here, I'm actually in a really big trouble because I can't handle Aldino unless maybe spamming Specs, Hyper Voice, plus Tectonic Rage later in the game. But still, uh, man, that screwed up my plan for sweeping so badly. So we get Charizard in, who should be able to take at least one. Uh, Clang Scales, and I don't know what the Aldino is going to do. Heal Pulse, Trick Room. Probably Trick Room right here. Or maybe it's Calm Mind. But I'm going to Toxic right here. As I do land it fortunately. So one Toxic on this Aldino here. I really don't know what to expect from my opponent. But this team's cool. Focus Blast once again. So I do call this right. And it's going to go into Zapdos. Which now it's, super, it's resisted. So yeah, not going to be taking too much. And Trick Room is going to be set up. So my opponent does carry the Trick Room. Now I don't want to Mega Evolve with Charizard. Because one, I resist Fairy. And the... Uh, drag, uh, dra well, I don't resist dragon, but I take neutral from dragon. If he has rock slide, I guess that could be a problem, but it looks like it's special Como, so it's not really bi too big of a deal here. So how important is Zapdos in this game? If it's slow king in the back, I need Zapdos, actually. So I'll go into Sylveon right here, especially since my opponent might just clang scales here, which I could definitely see here. So I'll go into Sylveon here. Because I definitely don't want to lose Zapdos if Slowking's in the back. Because it could be my opponent's last Pokemon easily. Helping Hand. Please be Rocks. Please don't be Rock Slide. Just Clang Skills. Okay. Good thing I didn't Mega Evolve. I'll take that. And that's minus three defense Como. So I'm going to be able to get Dragon Cloth into the Como. And this should be able to pick up the Knockout, I would imagine. Are you serious? That didn't pick up the Knockout. I'm disappointed in you, Charizard. I mean, I guess I don't have Tough Claws, plus I'm not stabbed, so I guess it kind of makes sense. But still, that's kind of disappointing, to, to be completely honest. I'm going to Protect here, and... What does my opponent have in the back, potentially? Guts Lord, the Torterra, and the Slow King. So... Since he's soundproof, Shadow Ball does hit my opponent now. If it was bulletproof or if it was if it was bulletproof, it would be able to take this. It's kind of weird. Como gets three cool abilities. Bulletproof, which prevents uh, ball and blast attacks from hitting it. There's overcoat, which I already explained. And then, you know, I already explained uh, what the gravity. So gravity focus blast. That's cool. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, soundproof, which we've seen. Still on slower than Como, so I guess I didn't have to protect my Charizard, but that's fine. Now it comes down to what my opponent's last Pokemon is. Of course, this means if it is Torterra in the back, I could have some problems. It is Torterra in the back, okay. Helping Hand Earthquake is definitely a predicament. Definitely. I'm gonna go hard into Landorus. I don't need Zapdos at all anymore, so I'm willing to sack Zapdos here, and I'll go into Landers here. Two more turns of Trick Room, it looks like, so I could just uh, send out my Landers. Landers will be able to eat any hit, protect, and then 
I could double up the Aldino. And then I do have Hyper Voice access with Sylveon once I switch into... Well, once I switch out and switch into it again. Hmm. But yeah, this Torteo is actually looking like a threat. Especially if it has, like, what, Rock Polish? I think it gets Sword Sense, too. I know it gets Wide Guard, which is what I've been expecting this entire time. Man, Torterra, that is so cool. That's definitely going to... Fun. I wonder which one goes into fun then, Torterra or the Aldino? We'll find out. So, Zapdos is going to come out. The Charizard's Osh is still going to retreat because Flare Blitz can knock out the Torterra one hit, which is like something that's really good here. So, Intimidate going to fire off on the Torterra. Also slows it down. A Helping Hand should be coming out. And I'm guessing that's helping on Earthquake. But that also weakens your Aldino, so I guess that also works in my favor as well. Hello, Tectonic Rage. <laughs> oh, man. Torterra using Tectonic Rage? Oh, my lord. That is actually amazing. That's actually amazing. <laughs> okay, so Tectonic Rage. As Zapdos is going to go down. Critical hit. I'm glad I switched out Zapdos in that slot because Zapdos was pretty much useless at this point in the game. Uh, let's see. Now I can go into Charizard and I guess double protect here. Since my opponent wastes his Z-move, can't hit through protect. Rock Polish is still something I have to be scared of, but he is at minus one. He or she is at minus one attack with the Torterra. And yeah, this is the last turn of Trigger, so I can double protect. I don't have to risk anything. I don't risk an Ice Beam. Even if he has like Heal Pulse or, or you know, Wish, which is probably Aldino's only form of recovery. As he got my opponent's just going to protect here. I mean, Helping Hand here, and I'm just going to double protect here. So let's see. Does this Torterra actually have anything? I was worried about what if Torterra went for like some kind of weird set like Rock Polish Substitute. I don't know. It's been so hard to predict in this game. What Hammer actually into the Landers? Okay. And the poison is racking up on the Audino. And since I don't really need Tectonic Range in this game and the Rock Slide can miss, U-Turn might miss out the knockout. I'll just go for the KO and I'll Fire Punch here. I should be able to have this game up sealed. Let's see, last ditch helping hand I'm guessing. No, the match is just going to be forfeit. So nice. We are going to be able to pick up a win against the Japanese Torterra. And I think that's a crazy way to end out today's episode. What do you people think? I think that's a good way to end out this episode. But thank you all for tuning in and watching this episode of VGC 2018 Vector Battles. I am always thankful for you people to be, well, for you people watching in general. Because I just play Pokemon and have fun. And people enjoy that. Yeah, it's crazy. But thank you all for tuning in. If you did like today's video, please leave a like down below. Shows your support. As well as you can feel free to leave a comment down below if you want to say something. Like comment out that crazy Torterra man. <laughs> and that Como. And the Mega Audino <laughs> with gravity. Yeah, just a lot of crazy stuff in that game. As well as feel free to recommend this video to a friend or family member or someone you know that would enjoy this content as well. And... You can always check out more content down below by hitting up my social medias, my Twitch channel, and of course, feel free to look back at the previous episodes of VGC 2018 Back for Battles or the side series on this channel. And if you want to try out this team, there's a pay spin of it down below for Showdown. So feel free to try out this team if you think you want to use it. But I think that's it for me. Thank you all for tuning in. I am James back here, and I will catch you around in another video. Have a good day, people, and I'll catch you around next time.